Okay, we are going to use Gauss's law to find the electric field from a sphere of charge. So at the origin in our XYZ plane, we're going to have a sphere of radius R, capital R. So that our radius is capital R. I want to find the electric field caused by the sphere of charge, my total charge will be capital Q. I'm going to find the electric field inside the sphere, literally inside the material, and some distance outside the sphere. So we're going to start inside. So, redraw my picture here. Here's the sphere. I'm out at R. That's capital R. I'm going to be some radius away from the origin, little r away from the origin. I'm going to find the sphere, the electric field inside the sphere at little r. r. Okay, well, we know the integral of e dot ds, dA, our surface, is the charge enclosed over epsilon naught. First thing we got to note is because of the spherical symmetry here, the electric field inside this sphere doesn't care about anything outside. It only cares about the charge that's enclosed. And it has to point radially outward. Just from a pure symmetric point of view, it wouldn't make any sense if everywhere on the boundary of the sphere, say the electric field pointed to the left, that wouldn't make any sense because if I rotate the sphere, nothing should change. The, we have to exploit the symmetry in all of these problems. The symmetry of the field has to follow the symmetry of our setup. So the electric field has to point radially outward. So these will be my E vectors right there on this sphere of radius little r. Okay. dA is a vector that points radially outward. We'll know that from calc 3. So E dot dA, those point in the same direction. That will just be this left-hand side. Because of the symmetry, E dot dA will just be magnitude of E dA. Also because of symmetry here, E has to be constant along the sphere. Wouldn't make any sense for E to be bigger on the left side than the right, because if I rotate the sphere, nothing should change. So E is constant along the sphere. If that's a constant, I can pull it out of the integral, and I'll just get magnitude of E the integral of dA. Remember that's a double integral, that's an area integral. Well the integral over this surface area here is just the surface area of a sphere which is 4 pi r squared times magnitude of e. The integral of dA is a surface area, 4 pi r squared. So that's the left side here. Now here's the hard part, the right side. The charge enclosed. I need to figure out how much of my total charge Q lives inside this little ball right here. Well, my density, rho, my charge per unit volume, will be Q over volume. That's Q over four-thirds pi r squared, capital R. All of the charge lives in this big sphere. The charge density, coulombs per cubic meter, four-thirds pi r cubed. That should be a cubed volume of a sphere. Then, every single time, you're always going to do this, the charge enclosed 
will be your density times your volume enclosed. This will give us what fraction of the total charge Q lives inside this little sphere here. My volume enclosed is this volume. 4 thirds pi little r cubed. So that will be rho Q over 4 thirds pi capital R cubed times volume enclosed 4 thirds pi little r cubed. That 4 thirds pi cancels out and I get Q r cubed over big R cubed. That's the fraction of all of my charge that I've captured in this little sphere here. So notice if you're halfway out, if you're at R over 2, you haven't captured half of the charge. If I had a 1 half cubed here, that would only be 1 eighth of the total volume is halfway out because volume goes like r cubed. If you go halfway out, you've only got one third of the, or one eighth of the volume. Okay, so now I take this, the left hand side, and set it equal to Q enclosed, this, over epsilon naught. So I'm gonna flip the page and write that down. four pi r squared magnitude of E equals, and then I get this epsilon naught in there. That's charge enclosed over epsilon naught. I'm trying to solve for E, so the four pi will come down, r squared will come down, we'll get magnitude of E is Q r cubed r cubed r squared epsilon naught and don't forget my 4 pi. The r cubed and the r squared kind of cancel out leaving an r on top so I get qr 4 pi r cubed epsilon naught. This is for inside still. We're still, this is still r at some position less than the radius of the sphere. Notice this electric field increases. R, big R here, that's a constant. That doesn't change. What we're saying is, if you start at the center, your electric field right at the center is zero. As you go out, your electric field keeps getting bigger and bigger. It goes up linearly until you reach the surface when big R and little r are the same, then you would get Q over four pi R squared epsilon naught. Well, that's just a point charge. That's Coulomb's all for a point charge. Okay, and we'll put all that together once we do outside. Now let's do outside. So here's my, my ball of charge. I'm out at a radius r. Q is still my total charge. Now I want to find the electric field out here at some distance, little r, that's outside the sphere. So little r is bigger than big r, which sounds weird, but that's what we got here. Then it's the same thing. We're always going to have e dot dA, that's a double integral, I'm going to write it literally as a double integral, it's implied, will be the total charge inside that sphere over epsilon naught. This side's the same as it was before. We, by symmetry, know the electric field must point radially out. Because we have a sphere of charge, the electric field has to follow the same kind of symmetry must be spherically symmetric, and by symmetry must be constant along that sphere. So the left side, E dot dA, the vector E and the vector dA point in the same direction, so the dot product of those is just the product of the magnitudes. 
E is constant, so this is magnitude dA. That E can come out because it's a constant, and we get the double integral of dA, but that is literally the definition of surface area. So that's 4 pi r squared E. On the right side, the charge enclosed well, I'm outside the sphere. I don't have to do any of that row stuff, any of that. All of my charge, all of my charge lives right here. And I've captured all of it. It's enclosed. It's inside this big sphere. So charge enclosed, I should say charge enclosed, is all of it, Q. So this must equal Q over epsilon naught. So E is Q in magnitude, we know it points radially outward, e is Q over 4 pi r squared epsilon naught. That's Coulomb's law for a point charge centered at the origin. What this means is you've got a sphere of charge. If you're outside the sphere, if you're way out here, you literally cannot tell the difference between this big giant planet-sized ball of charge versus a single charge sitting at the origin of the same amount of charge. It would look exactly the same to you out here. Okay, so putting all this together, if I do E in magnitude versus R, our electric field goes up until we reach the boundary of the sphere, goes up linearly, and then drops off like 1 over r squared. This goes 1 over r squared. This part rises linearly like r. The electric field keeps going up until you reach the boundary, you reach that maximum, and then it drops off.